Hello and welcome to SCAN's eCampus. SCAN's eCampus is a gold approved learning partner of ACCA. On this channel, we bring you demo videos of different courses available at SCAN's eCampus. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notifications of additional videos and hit the like button. In this video, we will discuss how are we going to estimate the value of bond using the spread. So to value the bond using the spread, we need to remember that fundamentally speaking, the market price of a bond should be equals to present value of the cash flows and that should be interest and redemption value discounted at cost of it. However, in the earlier videos, we discussed that there is an alternate way of estimating the cost of debt which is based on the credit spread and this credit spread will then be used to calculate the market value of a bond by estimating the present value of cash flows discounted at cost of debt for each year. Remember, as the credit spread will be different for each year and maybe the risk free rate of return as well. So in the credit spread cost of debt, the overall cost of debt for each year might be different. So how are we going to estimate that? Our first task should be to estimate the cost of debt for each year. And this can be done by the formula, which is base rate plus credit spread. Then we will estimate the future cash flows of that bond. And finally, we will calculate the present value. And in the calculation, we will discount each cash flow with its respective cost of debt. Let's see this from an example. So in an example, the company has a bond in issue, has a coupon rate of 5% and its nominal value is $100. And that should mean that the annual interest is 5% into $100, it should be $5. The bond has 4 year life and the loan note will be redeemed at par. The bond is rated as double A and the annual bond rate and the credit spread table is listed below. So we have base rates as well as the credit spread. And we have to estimate the value of the bond. Now to estimate that, our first task should be to estimate the cost of debt for each year. Now since the credit rating is double A, so the cost of debt for year one should be, year one base rate was 3.85%. Now if we add 0.15%, since 15 basis point means it should be 0.15%, this should give me the result of 14%, 3.85 plus 0.15. Similarly for year 2, we have to add 0.25% and this should mean year 2 cost of debt should be 4.4%. For year 3, we have to add 0.3%, 30 basis point means 0.3% and it will be 5.15%. And finally, Year 4 credit spread is 37 basis point, which is 0.37%. Similarly, for year 4, the basis points are 37, so it will be 0.37%. So if we add 0.37%, it will be 5.62%. So we have estimated the cost of debt for each year. Now we will make the cash flows to estimate the present value. So we have here starting from 1, 2, 3 and 4. Year 1 cash flow will be 5. Year 2 cash flow will also be 5. Year 3 will be 5. In year 4, the total cash flow will be 105. 5 related to the interest and $100 related to the redemption value. We will now estimate the present value by multiplying it with discount factor for each period. So for year 1, it will be 1 plus 4 percent raised to power minus 1. Similarly, it should be 1 plus 4.4 percent raised to power minus 2 then 1 plus 5.15 percent raised to power minus 3 and 1 plus 5.62 percent raised to power minus 4. So if you use your calculator to estimate the present value then the present values are it will be 4.81 for year 1 it is the present value then it will be 4.59 for year 2, for year 3 it will be 4.30 and for year 4 it will be 84.37. And finally if you total it, the total present value will be 
98.07 and this 98.07 will be the market price of a loan note. So fundamentally, the method is same that we have to identify the present value of the cash flows related to the bond. But since now the cost of debt for different in each year, so we have to use relative cost of debt or respective cost of debt to estimate the present value. Another important topic that may have been asked in the question will be yield to maturity. This yield to maturity is also known as gross redemption yield. So either they have asked you to estimate the gross redemption yield or to estimate the yield to maturity, both will be considered same. So if the current price of the bond is given and we have also known about the details of the coupon and redemption value then this information can be used to estimate the required rate of return. We can use this information to estimate the required rate of return, also known as yield to maturity. And this can be done by calculating the IRR. So let's see with the same example that how are we going to estimate the IRR. It is a similar question that I have just covered. We have a coupon rate of 5%, so it should be $5. And they have also told us about the current market price, which is 98.07. The life of the loan is four years. And we have now need to estimate the yield to maturity. Now to estimate that, we now knew, let me write years. In year zero, the cash flow is the market price, which is 98.07. Then from year one to four, there will be the interest cash flow of $5. And in year four, there will be a redemption value of $100. Let's take first of all 5% as discount rate. So for year zero, the discount factor should be one. For year one to four, we have to use the annuity factor and at 5%, the annuity factor is 3.546. And finally, year four discount factor at 5% is 0 0.823. From this, we will estimate the present value, which will be 98.07 then the second present value is 17.73 and finally 82.3 and if we sum it the NPV is 1.96 now since the NPV is positive so we will recalculate the NPV but this time around at a slightly higher rate so let's take 7% now at 7% so the discount factor will be 1 for year 0. Year 4 annuity factor is 3.387, 3.387 and year 4 discount factor at 7% is 0 0.76. This should mean the present value at 7% will be 98.07 negative. Then the annual cash flow present value at 7% will be 16.94 and 76.3. If we total it, we should get the answer of 4.84 negative. Now we will use that information to estimate the IRR, which should be 5% plus the NPV at 5%, which is 1.96 divided by 1.96 plus 4.84. And we have to multiply it with 7% minus 5%, which is 2%. Hence the IRR will be 5.58% and this 5.58% will also be known as yield to maturity. If you like this video, visit our website www.scansecampus.com to purchase the complete course at affordable prices. Register today at no cost and access our free 10-day trial.